you uh this one was uh oh this is for travis that's right so travis i think all of us are going to jump in on this we had a few talks along these lines this past week mm -hmm. uh how do i trust the process and just create i mean that's the million dollar question right like i'm struggling i struggle with that all the time because i've got ideas and i need to put them down i need to get it you know pen to paper or boots on the ground but i think i think the big key is is tr to trust the process don't think about having to do all of it by yourself you know surrounding yourself with with other good like-minded people is going to take you a long way they, it doesn't have to be a dedicated partner or a dedicated co-host or a gr it can be nebulous you can have somebody that you just bounce ideas off of you can have somebody that maybe you you know go to for advice on something but having having a support system to uh to get you through that process i think is the big one and that that was a big change for me that got me going on this whole creating journey so i uh, like with support system are you talking about face group Facebook groups, friends, you know, other podcasters. Do you have anything specifically that you lean on? Uh, I mean, for me, it's it's other podcasting friends that I've made. Um, the the big kind of watershed moment for me personally was when I uh, got onto America's Next Top Podcaster, um, and I did that show because prior to that, I had been doing the podcast. I finally kicked myself into gear and said, "All right, I'm going to start this podcast." Because I had been waiting for a long time for that that other that partner that second person, and I just didn't have I didn't have that. So I said, "Fine." I talked to a few friends of mine and got this rotating group of people, and I could call, get a hold of a couple of them, bring them in. Nobody had to dedicate to every single week, every single episode. Um, but then America's Next Top Podcaster came along. I got involved in that, and that blew open the doors and and brought a whole bunch of new stuff in because now. I wasn't dealing with just people I already knew. I was now meeting and getting to know other podcasters from other areas. That was big for me because I needed that expansion beyond my my inner circle and my personal friends. And that also helped me to trust the process because like, oh, well, they're all the same as I am. And, you know, they're, they're, there's no hierarchy and difference between these people doing a show for the last eight years and this person who's been doing it for the last eight months like we're all just kind of that level of hobbyist podcaster that was the big one for me so that helped me to trust the process because other people out there were going through the same thing i was and then i could lean on them i got to know them got to work with them forced to work with them but it then expanded i'd have maybe somebody come onto a show and then i'd go on their show and it would just be you know next thing i know i'm, I'm doing a show with a friend uh that i met through that uh, type of thing. So, you know, it's just, it's just getting out there doing that. But, but yeah, podcasting groups, other shows, um, groups on Facebook can work as well. Um, discord is one that I'm in a lot. So, you know, finding, finding groups that are just interested in the same things that you are. And that's how I ended up at dragon con this year. So kind of want to talk about that very shortly, but uh, I love it. I love that. I did not know Sean Weiland was in this season of America's Next Top Podcaster. He was, yeah, he was in season, a season four, after. Right? Yeah, he was in four. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was because I was part of season two. I'm in that discord for America's Next Top Podcaster. So when they would do three and when they did four, I would get in touch with all the contestants kind of after they got done. You know, I'd let them go through the gauntlet. And then after that, I would start talking to them all um, and, and getting people on. And I've had most of the contestants of ANTP on my show at one point or another. Nice. I'm a little disappointed. Ibit promised me he'd go and put in the rules, no deities allowed. Because, uh, <laughs> well, one, he's already written me out of everything. Like, you, you can't, in less than 10 years, you can't have no professional affiliations. Like, come on, man. He's just telling <laughs> me you don't want me on the show. It's fine. Uh, Kurt. Kurt. Hey. Kurt. Kurt. Hey, how you guys? Doing? I think you could be on America's Next Top Podcaster. I, I've thought about it, and now I always find out about the submission deadline uh, three weeks after. Yeah, yeah. No, I've I bugged Ibit a million times. Like, dude, if you're not going to let me compete because you're scared, then let me come be a, <laughs> a a guest judge. I've got a lot to offer, and 
I keep getting the hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Always the bridesmaid, never the top podcaster. So how are you doing, Kurt? What what uh we're gonna we're talking about actually you just came into how do I? Uh, but it's about trust the process and create. We can talk about that, but also everybody wants to know how are you? Um, yeah, I, I am I am generally doing okay. Uh, there is some pain, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um but uh, yeah, it's the recovery's going okay. Um, it was literally I went into the hospital at about ten thirty yesterday, and uh, I was home by like three thirty. Damn! They didn't do and the standard get here at four a.m. and wait five hours. No, right. in fact, I showed up a little bit early because that's what I do. And it was like, okay, we're ready for you. And it's like, what? What? Uh, so, <laughs> So they brought me into the room and started taking my vitals and everything. And before I knew it, like the anesthesiologist was so good that they didn't do, okay, start counting down from 100. There was none of that. It was literally like we were talking about something and then I wake up. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't even know. Yeah, he's like, awesome. nice. tell me a dad joke. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love general anesthesia. Like I, I legitimately enjoy it because it's like a nap. Yeah. that you weren't planning but you got to do um so and then i spent a lot of time yesterday just sleeping because where the yeah. anesthesia was still running through mm -hmm. and, and uh but the pain has been i mean it's there there's no question about it but but like i have uh percocet for for one of my pain meds and i haven't taken one yet right. yeah. because it's like right now just sitting like i am i'm not particularly in pain um i'm exhausted <laughs> to sure. be sure and if i twist a certain way or whatever it's gonna hurt mm -hmm. uh, because literally the there's a cut from hip to hip um yeah so and i've got lovely uh drains on either hip uh mm -hmm. which are which i have to collect and measure the fluid uh which is always a pleasure um mm. but uh yeah uh, it could be worse could be a so lot worse what do you say to the rumors flying around on the internet that you only did it so you could have at least a week of straight Bellatro? Um, well, I'd say that that is partially true because uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, because I get a week of straight uh, switch Bellatro because I'm not sitting at my computer. So um, you, you heard it here, Phil. He admits but, to it. But, you know, here's the other thing. Bellatro on mobile comes out September 26th. <laughs> i'm gonna have to buy it again that sucks i am I'm, I'm gonna end up doing it but um yeah no it's it's been it's been fine my son took the week off and he's helping out at home and and doing a lot of things that that i can't do and um I'm still not allowed to like i can't lift anything more than five pounds for like six weeks uh so it's yeah it's a, it's gotcha. a yeah so um but no it's it's fine i'm just exhausted all the time right now so. I believe it. <clears throat> uh, so, Joe, let's jump back into so we'll get Kurt Warren back in here. How do you tr trust the process and just create? Um, one of the things that it makes me think of is when we were at Chattacon, I went to a panel with uh, Mary Robinette Cole, and she was talking yeah. about her process when it comes to being an author and writing and how there's – parts of that that she absolutely hates, like just absolutely hates. And so she has found someone that will do those relatively small tidbits for her so that it doesn't, it doesn't become a hindrance to her creative process. And that's kind of what, what Travis was talking about, how you don't have to go it alone. You just need to find people that compliment you. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. You look great today, Joe. Thanks. Kurt saw that <laughs> laughing, and Travis tried to hold it back. Screw you guys both. Screw you guys. Uh, uh, so, Kurt, what do you yeah. think? How do you – because you've done story time with Kurt. Yep. You've done a number of things that are solo. How do you do it? Um, trust in yourself. So I think, I think that um, – where we tend to be the least creative is when we are worried about how it's going to be perceived by other people, mm. whatever we're doing. And so I think, I think honestly, the best advice is just create, 
just let it happen. And it might be shit. Oh, crap. Sorry. It's been a while. <laughs> wow, that anesthesia uh, is still kicking yeah, in hard, yeah, sir. Yeah. Uh, it, might be, it might be bad. It might be bad. But having it be done and be bad is better than not having done it at all. And, yes. and then it gives you something you can work from also. Because you may read it and go, ooh, that wasn't good. But maybe it could be better. Mm-hmm. So, that was a big thing I took away. I sat in on the digital Shark Tank um, panel the, over the over the weekend at Dragon Con, and that was one of the things somebody had brought up a project, and the panel was telling them, like, just make it, write it, get it written down. You can't be good at something until you're bad at it first. And Everybody, everybody goes through a bad phase at the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't, and, and that is the thing that I have to... Um, constantly tell myself is like it's the the adage of don't let perfect be the enemy of good like get something out there do the thing i've attended i had a tendency to really be bad at that now it's like i've got some things that i'm still holding on to a little bit too much and trying to be too precious about and i just have to i gotta cut that loose and be like no i'm gonna do this thing because i can always do it better later but i if i don't ever do it then all i'm gonna do is wonder what it could have been instead of here it is type of thing so well, here's the, here's the weird secret about doing something crappy up front is years later when you actually get pretty good at it and you can go back and take a look and go, you know what? I improved from that. Mm -hmm. Like like it yeah. like that that initial stuff, it you can you can always go back and go, "Wow, I it's gotten better. It's gotten a lot better." And and without that perspective, you know, we we don't get that sense of accomplishment all the time, especially as creatives where we just create and and it's more because we need to get something out and but we sometimes we don't get that fulfillment in, in our own little bubble yep so yeah uh travis do you think that because i know the general gist of america's next top podcaster is you basically have a week between assignments so you've got to get it done on a timeline with a team typically like a, a partnership yep. or whatever so did that help keep you build you did that help you build habits of just getting things done Absolutely. Absolutely did. Um, you know, I, I do that. And then the, the other thing that I do is I find creators that uh, I like and or admire, and I try to, to incorporate things that they do. So like, one thing for me, I know is, I'm going to be lazy about editing a podcast. Not because I can't do it just because I will, I will kick the can down the road and be like, ah, I, I can get to that later. I can get to that later. So I started really working on making all my editing happen in my head as I'm recording it. The less post editing I have to do, the better for me. Um, yeah. So that's that's a thing that I really worked on, and that was something that I learned while on ANTP was like getting it in the moment because you don't have a lot of time. You're only going to get one or two takes, or if it's an interview, you only get one shot at that interview. So that's the kind of stuff that uh, ANTP was huge for for both the networking part of it and then just the skills that I picked up. Uh, and and little things that I learned. I mean, even like an, uh, a very simple editing trick when I'm putting, because I play a lot of audio clips on uh, Wait You Haven't Seen. And during that, I remember specifically Jenny Josephson telling us like, if you're going to play a clip of something, one thing to do is put a very short fade in and fade out on either end of that when you take that clip so it's not a harsh start or stop where you get any kind of a pop to that. And, it, it, you know, a fraction of a second. But I do that. I, I pick that up from there, and I do that on every clip now, and it does sound better. So, like little, even little things like that that I picked up that I, I, I brought with me. I'd be such a good judge and mentor. Come on, Ibit, you're killing me. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I was fit, Travis Smith. Uh, no, exactly. It's go get what you want, and I'm I'm that that bulldog that. Well, if I got, I want to go get this. I'm going to figure out how to. X, Y, Z and build this or do that. And throughout the years, I've built a, a, I don't know, half a dozen different websites, depending on the code. Um, now I just like Linktree because it does everything I need it to do for my stuff or why is it nerdy for whatever shows you, you find, uh, uh, you find the ways to make it happen. And at a certain point, I realized that my own promotion of, I, I can help promote anybody else. Like I, mm -hmm. you, Tyra's like, hey, I don't, I can't write my own promotion in like ten seconds. I had her stuff written and done, but to write my own thing, 
I find it too wordy or difficult or I never settle. Yep. So that's where Tyra and I have partnered is she will write all of the serious stuff that I have to put out, like bios and stuff that I have to put out for myself. She writes those for me. Um, and, and then I, I help do editing, you know, I bring other things to her. We, you find that, that trade. And that's your point of Travis about uh, surrounding yourself with people and Kurt, yeah. just, just getting it done, man. Like I said, just record the diary thing. You didn't call it a diary, but that's how I've always thought of it is at one point, my podcasting career, like the bear crawling, a lot of the bear crawling era when I went solo was an audio diary. And I was yeah. actively thinking I'm going through trauma now. And I'm trauma dumping and I'm working through stuff. But I know years from now I can come back and look at it. And I was on, I was on a panel about I think creating in a digital world is what the panel was. And that was one of the things I wrote down, but didn't get a chance to bring up is those mile markers. Like you were talking about Kurt, where you're like, Oh, so bad. And then you might get to a point where you're doing a project now and you're feeling down on yourself or you're feeling that creative block and you go and say, it's like, Oh, look at all these markers I've hit. Look how far I've come right. for the first Couple, I think you were actually around for some of this, Kurt. But the first couple of uh, years of me going to Dragon Con, the whole joke was friend of the show because I would just name drop like nobody's business, right. and they're a friend of the show. But that was a mile marker to me. I was very proud that I set goals in my life to be a professional podcaster and I get to work with this person, this person, that person. And you know, John says Charles would break an arm off patting himself on the back. No, I can do it both hands at once, baby. I can still reach myself. I'm good. I've got long arms. They don't break. I, I find it funny that John thinks that would phase you. <laughs> Bro, yeah, if I have two broken arms, like Joe, hold your hand out. I'll pat my own back on your hand. It's all right. Um, uh, hey, so just because I need to uh, 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 jump in here, I. Uh, I I have to run <laughs> because well, uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't going to be more than a cameo tonight because yeah I'm still and by, no yeah. I'm just kidding Kurt I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. but no uh, thank you man so and, I and I only here. have two things to say um, one find me at VO by Kurt everywhere and two shut up Mike All right. <laughs> hey, Kurt, put your head to the screen and be healed my son be here head put your head I got my hand on your head I had, I had my hand head. I no, want to I hear can't, you. I can't stand. bend that I far. Think it, yeah. I can't lean. <laughs> <laughs> that's All true. Right. All right. Uh, thank you. And, and Travis, thank you for jumping in. That, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. You're looking great. Thank Hope, you very uh, much. Quick recovery. All right. Well, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Quickish. Uh, quickish. All right. We'll, we'll talk to you later. See you. All right. All right. Uh, now, the point John does bring up is I'm busting Charles's chops, but honest, his confidence is what is necessary to be successful. And that for me absolutely was. It was there was a point where it's fake it till you make it kind of deals like, I can't come off as scared as I feel when the early days, you know, I mm -hmm. can't come off going, what, what do you want to listen to? Oh, I just had to go through. And what helped me was just burying my soul and having just one person, right. And go, Hey, and I mean, Phil made the joke at God. It's like, Oh yeah, your, your friend was so messed up. It made their experience better, but they did write is like, Hey, you talking about your family experiences. It, it, it helps me. And it helps me review my life and, and my experiences and those kind of things. And that gave me more confidence to go on. Uh, I mean, we'll, and we'll throw this out when we'll go on the next one. But Travis, I mean, how did you, what did you do to get a confidence boost? Because if you don't have confidence, you're not going to keep going. So I mean, right. what, what kept you going? What was that confidence booster? It was, I mean, I keep coming back to it. Like ANTP was the first one because it, it made me realize I can do this and I can do this with these other people. How and far some did of you them get in that, by the way, uh, upper half. I think I was out around the top five of 12, um, somewhere around there. That's so I did, a, I, I did all right. Um, and it really, it, it came down to, um, you know, I just, I had made some decisions that particular week and I took ownership of what we did. It didn't work. And I was the one voted out. Some, somebody was going home, you know, the fact that I was even on it was huge for me, but it gave me, it gave me that confidence boost of like, oh, cause some of them were people that I had, um, heard of or heard shows of before, but also getting to work with, uh, some of the people. And it was like, all right, there's a confidence boost. And then from there it was, um, like the next big one was hitting a hundredth episode, um, because that's a big number and like, I'm like, all right, well this, you know, I can, I can do a hundred episodes. Let's just keep going. And then, you know, it was booking a specific guest and it was working with a certain person and it was, sure, yeah, 
expanding out to uh, doing a second show um, and also getting like just random the the first time I got random feedback from somebody that I didn't know that sent me an email and it's like hey yeah. I listened to your show I had one for the Highlander show that I do with Audi out of nowhere got an uh, an email from somebody in Argentina that was listening to the show loved Highlander and loved our show and I was like, this is the most random thing ever, but <laughs> awesome. Like, and that's, that's that thing. You touch that one person, that one person that, uh, that takes something away from what you've done in a positive or negative way for that matter, but in a positive way, especially yeah. gives you that, that boost to keep going. And then like just this past weekend coming down that escalator and seeing people lined up out front of the Galleria room before the show that I was doing the panel that I was doing yeah, uh, was terrifying at first, but also like, damn, people are here to, to hear me talk about something. That's pretty cool. And you know, it helped that I had you and Phil on the panel. Like that made it, you guys out, made yeah. it easy. But that again, there's, there's what I'm talking about. You, you find the support system that you need. I needed personalities like you and Phil there to help me, you know, do that show in that environment in front of those people. Um, you know, if you need, if you need somebody that does editing or you need somebody like Tyra that can do promotion, cause I can promote other people. I'm like you, I can promote everyone else all the time. I'm doing it right now with friends of mine. Um, you know, all sorts of stuff when it comes to promoting myself, I'm terrible at it. I'm just, I, I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. So, um, no, it's just little things along the way, little stepping stones, mile markers, that just you take that and you get a little bit of momentum and then try to carry that momentum to the next one. Uh, and one, I want to say, I love how much of a river of water Travis is. I keep dropping boulders in and he just, he, he splashes and answers me and goes right back to his thought. And it's like, so great. It's great. Joe, what, uh, what's your confidence booster? You are Charles. You're All right. Thanks for the show, booster. everybody. It's been great. We'll see you. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> uh no it's just when it comes to podcasting i i've always thought i could do that and so when the opportunity came up uh with pokemon go podcast when bo was looking for people to co-host i was like i could do that you know, it's never been the talking about it. It's always been, at least at the beginning, it was the technical side of things that I didn't know how to do. But I was like, okay, well, if I can hop in with someone who's already an experienced podcast host, they can help out with the technical side of things and I can just talk about stuff. And so it's just, it's jumping in and learning as you go. And the fact that you held your own with me and Brian Ibbett at the same time should be a boost. <laughs> if you go, I don't know who you are. Well, that's your bad, not ours. 